worship and music, right? This is good worship. Come on. That was good stuff. I know good stuff when I hear it. That was good stuff. Amen. Good deal. Right? Uh, hey, so welcome. We have some visitors here today. That's kind of been a normal thing for us, which is really good when you're planning a church ride. Uh, had some, some visitors lately, so it's been real cool. If you're a visitor here today, thank you. Good to, good to have you with us. My name is Darby. I'm the lead pastor here right now, and I uh, plan on being that for a while. <laughs> that didn't sound good to the time. Uh, as soon as this thing is going, I'm out. <laughs> it's, been a good, it's been a good ride. Uh, today, we're talking about a very important topic. Um, we're talking about what we call today is Mission Possible. Um, we're talking about the mission of the church. So before we get going, I want to really ask you guys a deep theological question. And it really is kind of deep theological. Um, what is, and if, if you're not a Christian here today, then you might not understand this. Maybe this will help you. Um, we're going to do some interaction today. Okay, we're going to do some interaction. We're going to, we're going to talk, so I want to hear what you got to say. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm tired of that guy talking all the time. Uh, tell me, when we talk about the gospel, the gospel means the good news. Simply put, it's good news. So when you read through Scripture, you see they preach the gospel. What they mean is they preach the good news. Well, the good news of what? That, that's what we're talking about today. Like, what is the good news? Let's kind of define it a little bit. Then I want to show you how that fits into and why we need a clear understanding of that and how that fits into our world. Then I want to give you two words um, that are going to help you as you look through Scripture understand what the Bible was talking about when it talks about good news and even some of the Old Testament stuff. So, with all that, the gospel. So, for all, for all the Christians in the house. Can I move this? Is this going to mess this up? All right. So, for all the Christians in the house, let's talk about this idea of gospel. All right. And basically, we're saying it's good news. All right. So, tell me what you think about gospel. Maybe some different adjectives or maybe uh, how, how you define it. What is the gospel? And I told James he can't answer the seminary guy. So I don't even want to hear what he says. Uh, I'm calling him if we start struggling. All right. uh, Val the same. Val the uh, seminary. So I'm not going to call him if he can't answer All right. So maybe Sam neither. Sam, Sam. All my seminary people, uh, you can chime in a little later. But what does it mean to you? Yeah, so Nick, you're in. You're a lawyer. You're definitely in. All right. Talk to me. Gospel. First four books of the Bible, or the New Testament. Now, if we were to say the Gospels, he would be right. All right, the first, the Gospels, like first four books of the Bible. All right, um, which that is true. Uh, so, sure, sounds good. What else? Death. What do those first four books of the Bible explain? And I would even make the case that the Old Testament does too. But what death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, death, burial, and resurrection. All right. So we'll go. With, I'll go with the. Betrayal and then resurrection. All right. So we're obviously talking about Jesus here, right? Would, we, would it be safe to say that the gospel centers around the person of Jesus? I think it's a safe assumption. Right? <laughs> Death, burial, and resurrection. All right. So Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. Um, that's pretty cool. But what does it mean? <laughs> God's plan to bring us back to Himself. Okay. Jesus. So be holy and see His soul. Okay. So there's a. So this we'll say this was. We can say this was. God's somehow another. Yeah. It's, it's God. Yeah. It's God's. It's God's plan. Okay. We'll say it's God's plan. Uh, what's some other adjectives we can use for that? Bring us back. You said. Would it would it be? I think it would be fair to say maybe redemption. Something like that. If I don't spell it right, forgive me. All right, let's go to the What else? So, yeah, bring us back. How does that work? How does that bring us back? Restoration. Huh? Restoration. Okay, restoration. Yeah, I think that would be close to this word here. But, but like, how, how does that work? Like, so he, he died a death for us. For sacrifice. For sacrifice. Okay, for sacrifice. All right. Sacrifice. Uh, so, so this idea of death, same thing. What about faith? Does faith come into play here? Okay. Does it hurt? Can you just know this stuff and have your life changed? No? you got to have faith, right? Okay. Great. 
Oh, you're debating it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. There's, I don't want to say there's no wrong answer because there is, but I'll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, okay. We're going to come back to this. Okay. We're going to come back to this. One of my favorite um, kind of movies, if you will, is the, the movies about uh, Mission Impossible. You remember that? Those movies? You know, it's just, you know, and they're they're all kind of the same. They all almost have Tom Cruise in them, right? Like you know, they're like Bella, you know, and and uh, you know, take apart like all the, the women in it. Like it's still a pretty good movie. You know what I mean? Like so, I'm not I'm not necessarily advocating you go over there and watch it. But what I always liked about Mission Impossible was there's always like these crazy action scenes, like crazy stuff. You want to see the craziest action scenes ever? Go watch Mission Impossible. That's what they're known for. The idea is like. The impossible is there, and there's no way they're going to do it. But they figure out this crazy way to jump off of a train and, you know, lasso a cloud and, you know what I mean, and, and swing into the air and hop on a car that just so happens to have rockets on it. You know what I mean? Like, and, and you think, like, how did, is this real? You know, it, mission impossible. Well, today, when we talk about the church, our mission, um, in reality, sometimes could seem a little impossible. The reality, it, it's, it's daunting. When we think about the church and what we're called to do, and I haven't really even told you that yet, but it has something to do with this gospel. What we're called, it's daunting. When you look at our world, look at your friends, look at what's going on, it's daunting. You think like, is the gospel supposed to change like the whole world? I mean, is this really what we're called to do? Like, and what are we, Life City, going to do with 50 adults right now? In a city that has 500,000 people just in Raleigh alone, Cary has over 130,000. Raleigh-Durham area has 1.2 million, projected to be over 2 million in the next two years. What in the world can Life City do about that? What can the church, I mean, even if we pull all the churches together in Raleigh, in Durham, I mean, we're talking about probably 15% max that would actually say, yeah, I, I attend the church. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of daunting, this idea. And you know, the reality is, when you look at the Bible and the story of God, and I want to give you like a quick synopsis of that, because it, it lines up a lot like Mission, Mission Impossible. There's a plot, right? Everything's good in the beginning, right? Tom Cruise is laying on the beach, having a good time with his wife or whatever. You know what I mean? And, and they're just, you know, and life is great. Life's great. We see in Genesis that life, was great. It was good for a really good time. Genesis 1 and 2, it's perfect. And then that's, it sets up a plot, right? Uh-oh, there's a bad guy. Tom Cruise gets the call, you know what I mean? This message is going to self-destruct in 30 seconds, so listen fast. The world's ending and you got to do something about it. Bye, click, you know what I mean? What do you accept, right? In our world, Genesis chapter 3, we read about the most tragic story, maybe in all of Scripture. A snake talking to a woman, which is a little strange, right? And she falls into this trap and sins. It's the first time sin entered the world. The Bible says that it broke everything. Everything. Every square inch of the world is broke. Every square inch. It'd be like a glass. You ever had a glass and you throw something at it? And it's like, pat! And then you, have you ever seen this done? It's like, <laughs> and the, the crack spreads throughout the whole thing. And you look at that glass and you think, there's not a square inch of this whole thing. That is not broke. That, that essentially is what we see in Genesis 3. It broke our world in every single way. And what's so crazy is instead of God saying, Adam and Eve, you're done. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to wipe you off the face of the earth. I created you as the highlight of my creation and you broke everything. You're done. God gives them a promise. And he, tell, he tells Eve, he says, you know, basically this idea of the serving said, you're going to strike his heel, but you're going to crush it. But you'll crush his head. This idea that something's coming better, but I'm not giving up on you. And we read throughout the Old Testament, the whole Old Testament is a story of God chasing and pursuing man. And him forming a people, Moses and the Egyptians, you know all that story? Them leaving Egypt. That's God forming a people that would eventually... The Messiah, the one who would fix the world, the good news, the mission of the church, 
would eventually be born out of this Jesus, out of this Messiah. So we see out of this, Jesus is born, Messiah, the world. As you read through the New Testament, you start to hear this idea of church. Now, as you know, I probably I don't have a whole lot of time. I have like 30 minutes, so let me put it to me. Where are we? 1045. I actually have less than 30 minutes, so i got to cruise. Here we go. We see that when Jesus comes, there is this sacrifice. And here's, there's a lot that goes into this, but Jesus dies on the cross. We, as God's children, who believe some of these things, put our faith in him. Here's what's really crazy. The Bible says that after we do that, there's an exchange that takes place. Ephesians talks about it as well. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit now comes and lives within us. That when we say, God, we give you our life, he says, okay, I'm going to give you something in return. And the Spirit of God comes to live within us. The Old Testament would talk about this idea of a new people. It would refer to us as people who had a new heart. A new heart. See, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come on you, but it would leave. It would, and it would go on you, not in you. See, we're different now. You don't have to worry about the Holy Spirit and even in, in and out, in and out, in and out. The Holy Spirit is in you. Now, there are things that we should do in our lives. They give us power. I call them spiritual disciplines. If you don't do those, if all you ever do is come to a church Sunday, Sunday gathering, you will be a weak Christian for your entire life, and you will never have victory. Don't hurt your feelings. I'm just telling you the truth. At Life City, we believe something different. We believe that you can be different, and you should be different, and we're going to help you be different. But that's part of our deal. It's not just a Sunday morning thing. So we get this Holy Spirit. We, we do these disciplines. We work on our relationship with God. We literally have power in our lives. And what happens? In the book of Acts, those people are called Christians. or followers of the way. You know why they were called followers of the way? Their lives were so different. People started saying, you look like a little Christ. Like, I remember that guy who died not too long ago, and your life looks a lot like his. Huh. Christians. That makes sense. See, the Holy Spirit's in us now. All of a sudden, our goal, part of our goal in life, is to be and look like Jesus. See, that's a very convicting question, right? So, so I pitch to you today, Life City Church, does our life look like Jesus? Are people going to ask us what's different about our lives? First Peter talks about that. Peter says, be ready to give an account for the hope that lies within you. I love that verse. Because it implies that people ask you what's different. That very much has a connection to guess what? You are different. That your life doesn't look like maybe your neighbor's life. He sleeps in on Sunday and he has nowhere to go. He's just messing with his garden or his grass or whatever. Your life should look different. Now when it comes to this stuff, I want to give you two different words that uh, help us understand scripture. Okay? And these are not original. Um, I didn't come up with these. There's actually a guy named uh, Mike Green, who's a great guy. Let me give you two words. The first one is this idea of covenant. And we'll have this stuff for you on the screen. When we become Christians, Jesus, and the, I'm going to give you two words, it's going to help you think through this stuff. This idea, the DNA, if you want to call it, is spun throughout the Bible. This is the idea of covenant and kingdom. Since it's on there, I'm going to show you. Kingdom. Now, two things. Covenant. Covenant is about relationship. Okay? It's about relationship. So when you come to faith in Christ, when you hear the gospel, you realize, man, this, this is about Jesus. It's about his death, his burial, his resurrection. He paid a price for me. Right? I couldn't do this on my own. There's no way I'm getting to God without Him. And you say, wow, this is incredible. And you say, God, like, I don't even understand all this. You don't have to understand it all. But you say, God, whatever you are, whatever you're doing, I'm in. I, I want to give you my life. I give you, and you by faith say, God, I'm yours. I'm yours. So whatever you want. That's what it means to say Jesus is Lord. See, a lot of people say Jesus is Lord, but Jesus really isn't their Lord. Come on. Say Jesus is Lord. His boss, you guys have really cool last name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Lord, I love it. Jesus, Lord. So they do that. They enter into this relationship with Jesus. The Spirit starts to well up in them. They get the Holy Spirit. They start to practice disciplines. They start to come to a church like this, and they start to grow. 
See, this idea of covenant, it's about the relationship that we have with Jesus. Everything in throughout Scripture is about relationship. Okay? And I think we have that one. Covenant, the relationship we have when we give our lives to Jesus. Two themes throughout Scripture. One is this relationship. This relationship with God. Now, in the Old Testament, it's with God. Now, we understand this relationship with Jesus that gets us to God. Okay? Now, the second one, and this is where it gets really interesting, is this idea of kingdom. Many churches understand covenant, but they don't necessarily understand kingdom. See, when we... You've been in these churches before. They... Um, a lot of people will come to a gathering like this, and they'll listen to a guy get up and preach, and then at the end of the sermon, right, and I might do this say just for fun, they, the pastor stands at the door, and everybody walks by and says, good job, pastor. You know, hopefully they don't give you a good game, but you know what I'm saying? You know, good job, pastor. You know what I mean? I've been to some, I preach in those old school Baptist churches, they like, good job, pastor, good job, pastor, and they walk out, and I would say that maybe nothing has changed in their life, and they don't do anything when they walk out the doors. To them, church is a building. We're adamant about saying, well, we really don't <coughs> go to church. We actually are the church. And not only that, like we just gather as the church, as Life City. So I'm even teaching my kids like when we go to Life City, you know, we're going to Life City. So the idea, this is our gathering of the church. Kingdom. What is that like? So this idea of covenant, all right, you're in, but you don't have to do anything when you leave. It's all good. It's like a pond that has input but never has output. Everything is dead. Now, I say we are supposed to be different. Not only are we to be people of the covenant, but we do have a relationship with God. You can't earn your way to God. You're never going to earn your way to God. If you try to, let me be very clear, you will never get to God. God will stiff arm you your entire life. He'll stiff arm you your entire life. You will never be close to God if you try to get to God by the way you can do. How good is good enough? There is no good enough. That's not, that's not what, that's, that would go against everything that God did and slaughtered his son Jesus on the cross. If you could get to heaven another way, then why in the world did he do that? There's no reason. It's crazy. If God did that, and that isn't salvation, then God's a murderer. And you might as well not even follow any God, because don't follow that God. See what I'm saying? It's crazy. This idea of covenant, relationship. I say we'd be a church not only of a covenant, but of the kingdom. See, you weren't saved. The Bible says you were saved for good works. You don't do good works to get to heaven, but you're saved for good works. Jesus, if you read throughout Scripture, the Gospels, the Gospels talk about a kingdom. Read it. Kingdom is all over the place in the Gospels. Why? Because that's what Jesus is doing. The church has a mission. It's not just to preach the gospel, if you will. It's also to be the kingdom. See, kingdom has a lot to do with going, doing something. Does that make sense? There's a kingdom. You and I are part of a kingdom. Now, it's not an earthly kingdom. Sure, it's not this kingdom where, like, you know, you got your stamp at the door and you're in. It's not that kind of kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. But it is a kingdom of people who are going out and doing and living in the world. Now, with all that to say, what is the mission of the church? I'm going to define it for you very clearly. For Life City, here it is. Um, and I, It's in Matthew 28. You guys might have your Bibles. If you do, open them up. If you don't, we have, I think we have it on the screen. Huh? Matthew 28, 18. Let's, let me show you something here. Look at this passage. In IV, is that what we do in IV? Okay. So this idea of covenant and kingdom, it's a relationship, there's a relationship with God, but there's also this idea of kingdom, there's a kingdom to be built. There's God's building something. He has taken over, if you will, okay? Matthew 20, 18 to 20. So Jesus has done all this stuff, all that he's going to do, if you will, until he sends the Holy Spirit, and this is what he tells the boys, the twelve, his, his buddies. He says, this is it. Then Jesus came to them and said... All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Okay. So Jesus has, has died, rose from the dead. He's like, this, this is what, here's the deal. I've defeated death. No, I'm telling you, I have the authority. 
So what I'm about to give you is mine to give. That's it. It's okay. Here's the deal. I'm giving you authority. Here it is. Okay. So go to the next one. Therefore, in light of, therefore, in light of, because of, you know, because of all this stuff you've seen, because of what I just said, here's what I'm telling you to do. I'm telling you to go. And in the Greek here, it's actually better translated um, as you are going. It's, it's almost like, listen, you're going about your life living. Whatever it is you do. Where do you work? Where do you shop? Where do you play? You know what I mean? Whatever it is you're doing, understand this. Our job, as you go, wherever you go, go and do this. Make disciples. See, this is the Great Commission. And this will be my phrase for you today. The Great Commission is the mission. Simply put, the Great Commission is the mission. What is the mission of the church? Like, you know, you can read books about it. You can, it can get real complicated. But the reality is, God tells us, the mission of the church is the Great Commission. It is to make disciples. And look, of all the nations, and then, like, how do we do that? Like, what do those people look like? And are there some certain things that go with a disciple? I would say, yeah. Like, one of them is this. They've been baptized. They're baptized. Now, you can have a big discussion about that, about what, does that mean sprinkling or showering? Does it mean dunking? Okay. I think it's pretty clear. If you go to the Greek, it actually means to submerse. Okay. Whatever. We're not going to fight over that stuff. But here, whatever. You know, there's no water where you go, we're baptized and they sprinkled you and then sprinkle. Okay. Here's the thing. There was some kind of baptism, something going on with these people. They're baptizing them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Some people say in Jesus' name. Again, I don't think it's a. It's, we get the idea of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then go up to the next one. And look at this. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. The idea with disciples, I know this sounds really crazy, really crazy. But the idea with disciples is that they actually do what Jesus did. Imagine that, right? <laughs> It's not that they go to a church. It's not even that they pray to prayer. It's that out of their faith in God and the Holy Spirit living in them, they actually do everything that I've commanded you. This idea that disciples, real disciples, the kind of people that we want in Life City, um, or what we want to produce, is people who actually live for God. They do what He said. And look at the promise. This is incredible. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Sure. Look, Jesus says, listen, listen. If you do what I'm commanding you to do, you do what I'm asking you to do, I'm going to be with you. So isn't that a great promise for us? So here we are at Life City today. We're like, well, what is the mission of the church? I'm telling you the mission of the church is the Great Commission. It's to go and make disciples. And I think we have a slide for this, but one of the ways that we say it at Life City, what's our mission? We are to be and to make disciples of Jesus. Like, that becomes your mission. That doesn't mean that you don't have a job. That doesn't mean that you don't work somewhere. That doesn't mean that you have a lot going on in your life. But what Jesus says to you and I is, listen, you need to go. As you're going, whatever it is that you're going, and sometimes I'm going to tell you to go to a specific place, and sometimes you're just going to be going about life, and I'm going to speak to you in those moments. When I do, remember that it's to go. It's to be about making disciples of Jesus. That's it. Now, we can't go over this today, but the next question is, well, how do we do that? Like, how are we going to make disciples? Is there a certain strategy that goes with this? And the answer to that is yes, but you won't get that for a little bit. That's not for today's talk. See, we're, over the next, if you will, till we launch, we're actually going to talk about mission, vision, strategy, and then values. Values are some of the things that actually define culture in your church. So what, what am I saying? The Great Commission is the mission. It's pretty simple. So today, is the mission possible? Yeah, it's definitely possible. What is our mission? Our mission is essentially the same mission that every other church's mission should be. To be and make disciples of, the, of Jesus. Does that make sense? So what's our mission? 
Matthew 28 is one of the most famous passages in the Bible. It's called the Great Commission. The Great Going. The Great Command. Then you can see this. With people, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. The idea is that you just fill in the blank. Is this possible? Yeah. It really is. Can Life City make a difference in this city? If you don't believe that we can, you won't stay. If you don't believe in your heart that we can, you won't stay. Because there are going to be some tough times. But you have to believe in your gut. You have to believe in this church. And you have to believe that we can make a difference. That we can. And I would say hang around for a little while. Because it will be just a matter of time before, and I think we're already seeing it, people come to know Jesus. People that are like, you know, I've never set foot in the doors of a church. But this is incredible. I've heard people tell me, I never felt the love that I felt in this place. Well, Jesus would say, hey, if you want people to know you're my disciples, love one another. <laughs> so, yeah, like, you care for people. You wrap your arms around people, no matter what they've gone through or what they've done. You love them. And it, people start coming to church. I hear story after story after story. I got an email just... Um, about four or five days ago, Amy and I were somewhere, and I won't tell you who this person was, but uh, they sent me an email, and in the email, it was pretty long, it was, you know, good little email, and uh, I told Amy, I said, read this, and Amy read it, and Amy's like, this makes me want to cry? You know, it's, it's life change. What do we want to see happen? We want life change to happen, and how does life change happen? It happens through people putting their faith in Jesus, and getting to know Him, and us at the church, rallying with them and propelling them forward, not only into covenant, but into kingdom. See, it's both. It's both in. It's not just we huddle up and we have relationships and it's all good and we're knowing each other deeply and we're talking about the Bible and our preacher is a good pastor because he can preach the word and it's deep and we walk out of here and what did you do with it and nothing. That's not success. That's not success for me. That's not who I want to be. It's also not the people who are like, our pastor, he's, a, he's an okay preacher, but we just we just want to go out and love people, and we never tell them about Jesus, we're just going to love. Like that's, that's a social gospel. You see, it's neither, either or. You love, you serve, you give, but you do it with a reason, because you have been given to. And when those people are looking for an answer, you tell them that it's not just about good stuff. I don't do this because I'm a good person. I do this because I love Jesus. It's covenant and kingdom. Covenant, kingdom. The, as you read through scripture, you'll be able to find those two strands throughout all the Bible. You'll see this idea of kingdom coming, where Israel is taking over land, and you'll see this idea of covenant with the temple, you know, and the people are getting to know God. And it's interesting, the better that people knew God and obeyed Him, the better off the kingdom was. But if they just tried to do kingdom and they didn't do covenant, it was over with. God would pull his hand off that place and they would shut down shop in no time. And next thing you knew, they weren't even living in their own land anymore. So it's about both covenant and kingdom. So as we walk out of here, I want you to understand the mission, the Great Commission is the mission, simply put. And as we move into the future, we're going to talk more about like what that actually looks like for us. But when we talk about the mission of the church, it's simply to be and make disciples of Jesus. That's it. You walk out of here with that and look for opportunities for that. You've gotten what I want you to get. Does that make sense? Questions, comments? Okay. So I'm going for anyway. Time to roll. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me pray for you guys, and then uh, we're, we're going to head out. I need to make two quick announcements after I pray so I don't run away, but two quick announcements to make. Good Father, we love you today. Thank you for, uh, for this idea of the Great Commission. Thank you, God, that you not only save us, from um, our own depravity and give us life, but you let us be a part of your mission. It's awesome. Um, God, I pray that as Life City Church, as we move forward, that we would see many people come to know you. I pray that these people in here today would be addicted to seeing other people changed. And uh, it's an awesome, awesome thing to see. God, we love you. We thank you. Um, we pray for you to watch over us, God, as we go out this week. Um, I pray that you would watch over Amy and I, God, as we head to Louisiana and uh, 
God, I pray that you give these folks vision and courage, help them to walk through the trials that they're walking through with, uh, with honor and integrity. And God, I pray that they would look for opportunities this week to be and make disciples of Jesus wherever they work, shop, and play. Thank you, God, for this week. In Jesus' name.